measured sauces, dressings, and a beep in the background. What the heck? 1042! You can do whatever you want with it. And I think here's... Hello, and welcome to today's video. we would do one of your favorite types of videos and that is let's clean out the freezer let's clean out the fridge get rid of all the things that we have so we don't have any food waste so we save money on our budget and feed our family some delicious meals i am definitely going to go and do a little bit of a throwback to my tried and true, my go-tos. I have definitely made videos on most of these dishes in the past on my channel but the quality is probably not very good and i don't recommend you go watch them but I'm very excited to clear out some space in my freezer to make way for future clearance hauls and all of the clearance meats and things and such. If you like clean out the freezer videos and cooking and random movie quotes in your videos, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss future videos like this one. So for today's dinner, I'm going to show you the dent I just made in my freezer. I have a huge pile of stuff over here on my counter, you're gonna be stunned when you see how much room I just cleared out. Okay, hang on. Look at this huge hole. This was full yesterday, full. And now it's, well, I mean, my mom's weird kumquats are here, but other than that, it's empty. And then I did pull a meat out of, you can't tell. Okay, never mind, you can't tell. And in my outside freezer, I have a whole like thing, you know, in the door, the door, and it's got the, it's got the hooky shelf and that that's empty also. So let me flip you around and show you what I pulled out and see if you can guess what we're gonna make today. Look at all this stuff. What, the light's not even on, hang on. Okay, now look at all this stuff I got out. So that little drawer in the freezer I just showed you, these are all my garden tomatoes from last summer. These are homegrown, 100% organic, all that good stuff because I grew these in my backyard. So I got all these out to thaw. They're clearly thawed. I went in my outside freezer and I found this homemade tomato sauce out of like the same tomatoes, right? I found this container of refried beans. I know it looks weird, but just hang on. Good, just go with me. I have these three packages of ground beef. I thought these were bigger. <laughs> I thought these were 10 or 12 ounces. My mom saw all this stuff out and she was like, oh yay, I haven't had good chili in a long time. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make like two big pots of chili. She goes, that is not enough beef for two pots of chili. And I'm like, sure it is. It's like almost three pounds. And then I looked, look, eight ounces, she's right. So I decided I would go to my downstairs freezer. Look what I found. Clearance chorizo. Wait, can you, yeah, chorizo. It's still a little frozen. Now, have you ever put chorizo on your chili? Yeah, me neither. But I suspect this is gonna be the best chili I have ever made. I also went into the pantry and I found, I pulled out all the beans. I have these sweet heat beans. I have pork and beans cannellinis, black beans, more cannellinis. I don't know what I'm gonna use yet. We're just gonna see what it looks like, but I have a feeling it's gonna be great. Oh, and we have one more thing we need to add. Do you see that? Not the sketchy lime, these. We need to add, oh look, good. We're gonna add the garlic too. We're gonna add all of these jalapenos. It's gonna be so good. Yes. I will have my chili recipe linked down below. It's delicious and yes because we're using all of these like fresh tomatoes that i grew myself we are going to add sugar to this i have tried the hang on oh my gosh i didn't close that i have tried the trick where you do baking soda instead of sugar so you're not adding sugar it's not the same it does not work the same it doesn't taste the same to cut the acidity of the tomato it's gotta be sugar it just has to be let's get some pots out and get rocking and rolling like chili you do not need to be exact on your measurements i have approximately two onions in each pot approximately 
three stalks of celery ish. If you have more, if you have less, it's all fine. My original recipe actually doesn't call for jalapenos or peppers at all. And instead of using the fresh garlic, I had this tubed garlic with only a little bit left. So I figured why not just go ahead and finish it. It's, it's truly like throw stuff in and taste it and then see where we are. Do you guys ever make yourself a cooking snack? Me too. Don't underestimate the power of sand. I'm telling you. Once your beef and sausage and whatever it is that you're using is cooked, it's time to add all of the tomatoes and the spices and all of that stuff. And there's kind of measurements, but I'm really just putting stuff in here and seeing what it looks like. I have three bags of these tomatoes. So I'll put one whole bag in each one and then a half a bag in each one just so it's kind of equal. And then we're gonna see what it looks like and if I need more. And I'm telling you, once you've made chili with fresh tomatoes, you just can't go back. It is not the same, not the same as using canned tomatoes. I mean, it'll work, but fresh is always better. So if you can get garden tomatoes, stick them in the freezer and save them for times like this in February, do it. Okay, we're doing my tomato sauce. Now this is just pureed tomatoes and that's it. No salt, no nothing. So half in this one half in this one and now i can see how much is in here and it does not look like enough liquid for me can you guys see that it's just it's a little light on the liquid because remember we're going to add a ton of beans also so at this stage you want it to be a touch liquidy i'm going to add more tomatoes so off to find some more frozen tomatoes to add to this and clean out my freezer a touch more do i have any more in here is the question. It's not looking good. Let's check the outside freezer. I do have some here, right there. Gimme! Oh. <laughs> and then there's more sauce here. Um, is it is it gonna go? Oh, here we go. Here's some there. Tomatoes, right there. So look, I have a whole empty drawer and then like I have an empty one here. So excited. I added my frozen tomatoes. It's all right. They'll, uh, they'll thaw out in here. And I have the rest of the sauce kind of, I can't divide it in half when it's like this. So we'll add that in a second. But what we're gonna do now is add all of our spices and stuff. So I have my chili powder. It's just this one. I'm gonna do a quarter cup of chili powder to each. Yes, I know this feels like a lot, but we're making a lot. And chili's supposed to be a bold flavor. So let's make it a bold flavor. Okay, there we go. I usually add pepper, but I feel like with the chorizo and the peppers I put in it, maybe go a little light on the pepper. Just, and we'll taste it later. I don't know, a half a teaspoon in each one. This is literally like dump stuff in and then we'll taste it later. I always add a little hot sauce. I have a, t a touch of this Tabasco. I don't know if I'll finish that. Tabasco is very spicy. Uh, I don't wanna go too nuts, we'll just do that. My mom will probably add more later. She's a little bit of a Tabasco nut. I still have some in there. Next up is some Worcestershire sauce. We are going to do at least a tablespoon each. So I'm gonna guesstimate about like that. I don't know. It doesn't come out very fast, so that's about a tablespoon or so. Now we're gonna add some salt. Here's my salt. This is just a coarse kosher salt, I would say. Let's do a half a teaspoon each. And we can always add more, always. And I'm not going crazy on the salt because my beans are canned from the store and they have added salt in them. If I had done my own beans, I would have definitely added more salt because they're not salted. Are we clear? We can always add more, always. So we'll give that a little bit of a stir. Time to get the sugar. Okay, I have some cane sugar here. I'm gonna do mm, about two tablespoons for each one. Otherwise, it's just gonna be so acidic. And we will taste for acidity also in a little bit. Basically, when you get to this point, you're gonna put a lid on it and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. We want all these tomatoes to kind of dissolve in here and the flavors to come together. These have been simmering away for a little bit. I think I'm going to add the beans now. These tomatoes don't wanna squish very much, do they? They will. We'll just give them some more time. Now I know what you're thinking. Beans don't belong in chili. And you know what? You do what you want and I'm gonna put beans in chili 
because I like it. They're cheap, they extend the dish well. I have these refried beans that were frozen and I'm gonna put half in one and half in another one. I know, mind blown, you can put refried beans in chili. It's an excellent use for it. Pork and beans and chili is also great, so we'll dump that in and then see what it looks like and then I'll make a decision about what else we're gonna put in there. You can do your favorites. You can do pinto beans, you can do kidney beans, which are my favorite. It truly doesn't matter. Whatever you want, go ahead and do it. I think I'm gonna add these sweet heat beans. That doesn't look like there's very many beans in the pot, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. And then we'll take another look. Hmm, what do you think? There's the refried beans, we'll stir those in. It kinda doesn't look like there's enough beans still. I feel like we're just gonna add all the beans today. What do you think? We're gonna do it. We're gonna add all of these. This one in one, this one in one pot, and this one will split between the two. And then we're gonna let it simmer for another 20 minutes. That's the rest of the beans we're gonna add, and the lid goes back on, we'll see you in a bit. Now that it's simmered for long enough, it's time to do the most important part, which is the taste test. If it looks a little liquidy to you, just turn the heat up a little bit and take the lid off, and the extra water will evaporate out and it will thicken up nicely. Yeah, that one's like going nuts. <laughs> Oh, that was hot. And if you find if your tomatoes are like not mushing, you can just use the back of a spoon and kind of mush them on the side, which is what I'm kind of doing a little bit. So we are tasting for salt, chili flavor, uh, acidity, all of that. I think my acidity level is good. We can put the sugar away. I think we need a touch more salt though. We're gonna go, I don't know, like that. Maybe another half a teaspoon, I guess and cook that in there and then while this finishes up and what's great about chili is you could leave this on the stove on low or if you have a big dutch oven like this it stays warm for so long people can come and grab and go whenever it's convenient for them like it doesn't have to be eaten right away and what i love about chili is the longer it sits the better it tastes so it's a great one to have leftovers of for the next day it freezes beautifully it's a great option to gift to someone and there's so many different ways to eat it you can have it on baked potatoes you can just have it in a bowl you can serve it with rice which is what we do in my family so i have some rice cooking over here in my instant pot why couldn't say i think it was because my parents both grew up pretty poor and rice is a very cheap meal extender so they just had like everything with rice i grew up eating chili on top of rice for me it's normal it's what we do in my family i've heard some people is it cincinnati chili am i doing that right where you have it over spaghetti noodles you can have it with cornbread you can have it with fritos you can do what you can have it on hot dogs you can do whatever you want with it that's essentially it we have <laughs> We're gonna have leftovers for days. In fact, we actually do leftovers for lunches most of the time. So we'll eat one pot tonight for dinner. Oh, maybe not all of it, but almost all of it. And then this one right here will serve basically me, my mom, and Dave for lunches for the next two to three days. Okay, that's gonna be it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. I do like cleaning out my fridge of the things that I have, and I do enjoy a meal kit box every once in a while. So, I guess we can use this one right here. Huge thanks to Green Chef for providing tonight's dinner and for sponsoring today's video. Did you know that Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company? They even offer dishes for a variety of lifestyles, including paleo, keto, vegan, and vegetarian. Recipes are quick, easy to follow with step-by-step -step instructions and pictures and chef's tips along the way. Recipes include pre-measured dressings, sauces, and spices so you can get more flavor in way less time. With Green Chef, it's easy to eat well and discover new recipes every week that you'll love to cook. You think I'm gonna leave you guys hanging without a promo code? Oh no siree. All you have to do is go to greenchef.us slash 90 frugal fit mom to get $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. Mmm. Let Green Chef do the meal planning, grocery shopping, 
and most of the meal prep for you week after week. This is the keto box and I've tried a lot of the different style of boxes and I think the keto one is my favorite. Their sauces are bomb. They totally make the dish. All of the vegetables are beautiful, the green beans this time were just lovely and cooked to perfection if I do say so myself. So listen, if you wanna try out Green Chef, they are giving you a deal today. Just go to greenchef.us slash 90 frugal fit mom and enter the code 90 frugal fit mom to get $90 off and free shipping off of your first box. And let me know down below which recipe is your favorite. This is delicious. interesting that my chili recipe and my chicken pot pie recipe start very similar. Basically, you clean out your refrigerator of a bunch of veggies and you cook them in a pot with your preferred seasoning. And that's essentially what I'm doing. So I ended up not putting any potatoes in this and I usually do potatoes, but I just didn't have any. I have some cooked chicken in here that I put in my instant pot. And once you saute these for a little bit and add salt and pepper, I simmer them in chicken broth until everything is soft and then finish it off with heavy cream, a little bit of butter, and I taste one more time for seasoning. While that was cooking away, I decided to take a few minutes and make my homemade pie crust. It's delicious, it doesn't fail, it's so good. It goes with a savory pie, it goes with a sweet pie. I do have a dedicated video on this and a recipe link down below for you. Homemade pie crust, while it can feel intimidating, once you get it, and I promise you, you cannot mess this recipe up, It is so worth it to take the few minutes to do it. The store-bought stuff tastes like cardboard. This homemade pie crust will elevate any kind of chicken pot pie or apple pie or whatever to the next level, I promise you. And I did have one more of those salad kits and I had a little bit of extra for a little bonus pie, if you will. I am getting to work on tonight's dinner and I know this looks weird. So let me tell you what I have going on in here. These are fully cooked turkey Italian meatballs. I know they kind of look gray in color and that's because it's ground turkey and not ground beef. Um, I had that question before and I'm making a little bit of a tomato sauce. It's just tomato paste, Italian seasoning and some water. And I'll probably, I'll taste for salt and pepper and maybe add that in a little bit. Since these are already cooked, I'm just rewarming them and kind of getting my sauce together. And over here, I have some little rolls. Uh, these are like little sourdough ciabatta rolls. And we're making meatball sub sandwiches. And I had some of this spring mix still in my refrigerator. So I dumped this out in a bowl. And I think I'm gonna get out some fresh tomatoes, um, some grape tomatoes that I got from my Misfits Market box. I think I'm not going to dress this because I want the kids to kind of put whatever dressing they want. I was planning on doing Italian seasoning, but the more I think about it, the more I'm just gonna leave it dry and then they can take however much they want and add their own dressing. Ryan prefers Catalina, my older two prefer ranch, and actually Tyler doesn't like dressing at all, which is weird, but you know, whatever it takes to eat your salad. I did toast my little, uh, I don't know what you call it, little roll, sandwich roll things? I don't know. With a little bit of olive oil, I did put them in a 400 degree oven for just a couple minutes to get them kind of toasty. And now I'm gonna put my meatballs with my sauce in here, top it with some mozzarella, Parmesan, stick it back in just until the cheese melts and I'm basically done with dinner. It's that easy tonight. That's one reason I love having pre-cooked, pre-mixed, pre-made meatballs in the freezer. It's just like a super quick dinner. Finished meal, incredibly easy, and I did get a few more things out of my freezer and pantry. Look how delicious that looks. Why don't I make meatball sandwiches more often? I couldn't tell you, but I really need to do that. Note to self, make meatball sandwiches like once a week. It's like the new pizza night, right? Look how good that looks. For dinner tonight and another day of cleaning out the freezer, for all of my new people, let's talk about this right here. <laughs> so I grew a garden in my backyard. 
in summer of 2020. And I planted a few spaghetti squash plants and ended up with, I can't remember how many, but it feels like I ended up with about 40. And look, there's some over there mocking me right now. But I did meal prep some of them and stuck them in the freezer for later. So that's what I have sitting here some of my prepped spaghetti squash. We're gonna cook it and eat it today. Of course, when I say cook it, it's already cooked and it's been thawing for a couple of hours, but you can see it's a little like squish or whatever. I think I'm gonna stick it in the microwave to finish thawing it completely and squeeze out the extra liquid. I also have this hot Italian sausage from my local Kroger affiliate store that has been in the freezer for a little while. So we're gonna brown this up. And my mom has this habit of purchasing ingredients and then eating some of it and leaving it in the fridge. So I, I found this in the fridge. We're gonna go ahead and finish this off. I didn't think it would be enough. So I pulled this out of my pantry as well. Obviously I picked this one up on clearance too. So we'll mix these together with this, with this, maybe some cheese and we'll do some kind of spaghetti squash sausage bake thing. That's what we're making. Let's get started. I took the sausage out of its casing and mushed it all up with my meat masher before I put it on top of all of my spaghetti squash, which I squeezed out all the extra liquid. I feel like if you pre-freeze that, that's a really important step. Otherwise it's extremely watery. This is such a simple dish, a pasta, a spaghetti squash, spicy Italian sausage, whatever sauce you like. And when I, <laughs> when the time came to put this all together, I realized that I did not have as much mozzarella cheese as I thought. I really thought I had like a whole bag of it and I didn't. I had this little leftover bag from a meal kit. And I get asked sometimes why I have extra bags from meal kits is because I don't typically use all of the cheese that comes in the meal kit because I find that they send too much sometimes. So I have some Parmesan, some mozzarella, and I finished it off with the shaky cheese just to give it a little bit more cheese flavor because that's all I had left. I even texted my neighbor. I was like, hey, do you have extra Parmesan cheese? She didn't. So <laughs> that was all I had for this day. Don't worry, my friends, I will have all of the recipes down below in the box. And I think here's the consensus on the spaghetti squash in my family. I like it. Haley likes it. A good way to get your kids to eat it is to cover it in sausage and sauce and cheese. For those that are particularly not loving it, if you mix it half and half with regular pasta, it kind of disappears and the regular pasta flavor will will be mostly what you taste. But if you go straight spaghetti squash, it is gonna be difficult for most kids to eat. Mine ate it, but I, I kind of wish I had gone half and half there. So I did want to mention that. And I'm not gonna lie, those green shelf meals are absolutely delicious. It was so good and I even had one helping left over for lunch for the next day for me and even the tomatoes reheated up were so good. So if you wanna try out Green Chef, I recommend the Keto Box. It's my favorite of all of the variety of boxes that you can get. I do have that link down below to save you $90 and free shipping off your first box if you wanna try it out. So thanks for hanging out with me and cooking with me this week and I'll see you in the next video.